Today we're going to continue with the lessons on the introduction to Capella. Uh, the next section we're going to address is basically defining is regarding to defining the solution on that topic area, and we're going to focus in on physical architecture. Uh, the physical architecture is really now where the abstract design of the logical architecture becomes uh, realized with actual designs that we're going to be working for the, each specific parts of the system. Now, this this fits into the innovation matrix, as we've seen before, is the logical architecture is how the, we kind of expect the system to be fulfilled. But the physical architecture is now is how the system will be developed and built. So we're really getting into the details of how it's being built. And now we're really getting into the details around the domain definition and how the system will basically be uh, figured out, you know, implemented in the domains that are going to be part of the solution. So we're focused heavily in the solution part, and now in the, we're in the physical architecture. Reminder of the design we're working on, we're working towards this design for trail power, uh, which has these basic features. Uh, we're going to be implementing that in this architecture. So now when we get into the physical architecture, we are going to have a physical architecture blank diagram, very similar to what we had with logical architecture. However, there's some additional things. Uh, we have components and functions of the design uh, like we had before, but uh, we have physical components as opposed to just logical components. Now, the physical components are much more uh, mapping one-to-one -to, -one to what actually would be in the design, thinking up the design. Uh, the Arcadia introduces this concept of a behavior component. It actually is now a component that captures the functions. So there's a possibility in this design that you may not want to go into a lot of detail on certain components. So therefore, you have a way of not having to do that, uh, and you can distinguish that between whether you develop out these behavior components or not. The Capella allows you to, allows the allocation of functions to these behavior components, and the logical function chains now can become uh, physical uh, chains that are delivering the functionality through the hardware and the software uh, through these behavior components. The physical ar architecture can be annotated and be used to capture your design decisions about how you're going to implement things. And the physical architecture is now a stepping off point to the very specific tools that you may be using to develop the, the design and the mechanical and electrical and the software portions of it. So now we're going to go off and we're going to do a little bit of a demonstration of this. And we're going to walk through some of these different diagrams and show you what they look like in the actual tool. Now, here you see I'm opening up the, I have the physical architecture. I'm going to open that up. And the first one I'll look at is one that basically looks at the physical nodes. So this is kind of my physical organization that I'm going to have for this product. Now, this takes a little while to come up with this organization, but in this case, I did know that I wanted to use that boost component that I talked about. So I do have the boost here, and now I'm deciding that I'm going to need to have some type of charger indication board that ties to the, to the boost. I'm going to also need a, a battery holder. I'm going to have battery, so I'm going to have a battery holder. I have some fuses. I even started thinking about what types of batteries I'm going to have. Uh, I'm going to have a USB cable. Uh, I'm going to have a, a solar cell. Uh, I'm going to have a telemetry box that's basically going to implement the system. Now, this shows just a view of the node components that I have. And a lot of times, just like you did with the logical, you'll start with the node components kind of first laying things out and showing the interfaces. Now, the interfaces here are actually physical interfaces. So these interfaces are like the cables. So here's the USB device, and that's the cable coming in. Now, I'm representing the USB cable as kind of as an entity itself because it truly is, but it has a connection to the device and a connection to the uh, to the actual component over here. Now, I am showing something called a pathway, and you can create these pathways by just simply selecting objects and say physical path. A pathway basically is a way to get away from uh, defining more detail on this cable. Since the cable USB cable is well known, I'm deciding that I'm not going to go into a lot of details on it and its functionality. I'm just going to basically make information pass through it and assume that everybody knows where the USB cable is. Um, similarly, I'm doing the same thing over here with the internet and a Wi-Fi router and an antenna. I'm basically going to have that one functionality all be basically one pathway. And so now I'm going to go to the next diagram that we have. So now I'm going to start looking about what things are going to have behaviors. So I'm going to start adding, adding behavior nodes to the system. So these are the things that are going to have behaviors, and I want to actually detail those out and map functions to them. So I'm going to just slide this over a little bit here. So here you see I have the boost and the indica charger indication board. I have the fuse, the solar cell, a PCB, a PCB board for telemetry. Now, you notice here that I'm actually depicting boards, circuit boards. 
Well, circuit boards are not much different than anything else. They have functionality that they have to deliver. So I'm going to start mapping functionality to these, these PCB circuit boards. And then for the software, let's say this photon particle here, that's going to have software functionality. So I'm starting to think about what I'm going to develop, and then I can start annotating that uh, with, with annotations as I'm going through the design. What I'm By annotations, this is what I mean by annotation. I'm going to go back to a slide here. So there's the design we were just talking about. And I'm going to start annotating the designs with some information around what's going to implement them. So I'm starting to show this annotation here. So I'm going to actually go back and show how I'm starting to annotate in the model. So I can go in here, for instance, and double click on this photon particle. And I can say, oh, well, that photon particle thing, well, let's go ahead and make that uh, software that's going to implement that. Um, then over here for this telemetry solution, uh, same thing. I can have, actually have that behavior be a hardware behavior. I can do the same thing for the components, too. I can actually, uh, so I'm showing here that the node component is actually a hardware block. So I've got that designated. This telemetry box here, uh, that's also been de designated as hardware. I can show that this charger indication board, uh, let's set that as hardware. And this boost, we're going to say that's hardware um, and put that also in that thing. And we can go through and we can start annotating things here. Same thing with the software functionality. I can say that that's going to be done in hardware. And same thing. I can have that all designated here. So I can start putting things and I start planning what I'm going to build things out of. And then I, start, can, I can start realizing, well, who has to develop this and what domains of expertise. Let's say this thing here, this charger box. Yep, that's going to be a hardware portion there for that. Uh, and I can even start adding in information, of course, because just like I had before, I have the description fields that I can use. I can double click on this object, bring it up, and I can actually add in text. So here I do have the component that I selected, and I did actually select one of the components that I was using previously. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that component to get a reminder of what it looks like. That's launching up on my other windows. I'm going to bring that over here. So this is the component that I'm going to actually end up using this uh, device for it. So now once I've got that done, I can start thinking about, well, what's the functionality that has to be delivered for these different things? So now I'm going to go and I have the diagram for the functionality. And I showed that a minute ago. And I, I can basically map all the functions to the physical node. So this is my functions to it. Now, so you notice in this diagram, things start getting pretty busy. So it's not unusual that you'll actually have maybe one overall diagram that's kind of uh, has a lot of the detail. And I have also all the same functional chains that I had in the other one, but now they're going through the physical component. And you can see the, the complexity that has gotten now. Uh, the charge USB device uh, is this red flow. Let's just take a look at that particular red flow. I have a dedicated diagram just for that. So here's just the red flow going through it. And this red flow of charge USB device starts by producing the light. It converts the light to power. It goes to the charger indication board. Uh, there's some technology there that, it, that turns on the, the light when things are, uh, when power goes out. Um, there's a voltage level conversion going on. I have that indicated here. Um, that goes then down to the battery uh, and it actually you know, protect the charge overcurrent. So I'm actually now basically charging the battery. And then the battery is actually comes back through that charger indication board and gets distributed to the boost. So the boost actually is what's basically boosting the voltage to uh, the USB voltage. Uh, and there's a shutdown capability on that so it can shut down for low voltage to kind of protect it. And that functionality came from the board itself. So I'm actually able to capture some of that information of what the board does. And then, of course, the USB can go to the USB device. Now, one of the things you'll see here is that you'll see there's another types of interfaces. This is the functional interface that we've kind of had all ever since the system analysis. Well, we've introduced this component exchange right here that basically goes from one behavior component to another. Uh, in this case, it's going to an actor. Here you can see it's going from here to here. Now, these exchanges are considered basically change, changes of behavior that's being delivered by the functions. So they're the inputs and outputs to these behavior components. And so then, and I can actually go in here and say that that connection that you're seeing there uh, what actually 
is being implemented by that connection. So let me just click my flow here. And I'm going to say, well, what functions are being delivered by that component exchange? And you can see here that I'm delivering a couple functional exchanges. I'm doing the boost power and power and the state are all going across that component exchange. Now, that component exchange eventually has to be related to some piece of physical connection. And that's what's being shown here is the physical connection between the two, between basically the charger indication board and the boost. And one way to think of it is the, if this physical link goes, I'm going to lose this capability for communicating those functions across this cable, and then therefore those functions won't get used. Uh, likewise, you'll see the same thing down here for the uh, power to the batteries. You'll see that there's, and you actually can tell what ports or connections of functions are going, because you see these little dotted lines here that say what functions are going to that component exchange. So you kind of know what's going to get lost in case of uh, a failure or a shutdown of the functions. You'll see over here another one where I have, here's the function flow through it. And that function flow is then mapped to that component port. That component port goes to this component exchange. And that component exchange then goes to that physical link right there. So from the physical link, it basically allows components to exchange information. And that those components then can have flows going through those exchanges. So this now is really getting us to the point where we actually know what we're building uh, and starting to build for this system. Because not only do we know what our decision is as far as making something in, in hardware or not, but now we're actually saying these are the functions that it needs to deliver to, to deliver that hardware. And, and when, with that information now, we're able to start moving to our downstream domain design. Uh, so in, that, in this particular situation, I'm going to go back to my slides here. Uh, we went from this then to basically making decisions like this of how I'm going to build the system. So I know that I'm going to actually build a box for this charger box, and it's going to have a 3D printed uh, capability for it. It's not delivering any major functionality that we've don denoted, but we know it has to contain these things. So its main functionality is just to contain these objects. Uh, we notice that this charger indication board here uh, is going now to be delivering this schematic functionality and also this mechanical design is basically going to be implemented. And that's better to be done in the downstream domain tools than to continue going any further here. Um, this is the battery, and in this case, this is the actual battery holder. The batteries themselves I've already chosen as 18650s, which we talked about in previous design. And here is the uh, schematics that are going to be used for this p uh, telemetry PCBA board. And then here, I'm actually even showing that I'm going to use code to basically control the telemetry information and send the information over these devices to the to the cloud that basically is going to allow us to be indicated. Now, some of this information can be captured back on the diagram, and, and sometimes it's very useful to do that, to capture information back on it. So I, I do have an example here of how I can go and actually add pictures to the diagram. And this shows how I can actually have pictures, and I can, can start annotating it and even use this diagram essentially for design reviews to help people kind of understand what we're building or what we have built. So here's the, the boost is being depicted in a, in a nice graphical representation. And this is done by uh, using a very simple technique. Uh, you can actually select the object, and you can bring your pictures that you have and bring them over into a folder. Here's a folder called Images, and I dropped... Uh, PNG or JPEG files into that folder. And then I can basically select the box here, and there's a little icon here that allows me to set the image from that information. Uh, what I, a lot of times I'll do is I'll use a little, let me call it a constraint object, and I'll just use that, and then be able to set pictures from it. It's a very nice technique to you know, annotate diagrams and uh, use an object for, for doing that. Just like that. So, let me just go and get rid of that object. Okay, and so then finally, let's go back to summaries with the slide deck. So with the physical architecture, you saw how the physical architecture uh, blank diagram starts to depict the components in the function design. You saw how uh, we the Capella depicts the physical components, how Arcadia introduces its behavior components to hold the functionality, how with Capella you can allocate the functionality to these components, and how now the logical function chain has become the physical functional chain delivering the functionality through the various hardware and software behavior components. 
is how the physical architecture can be annotated to capture the design. And you also can see how uh, it becomes the stepping off point for downstream design tools. So that 